What's up guys and welcome back to Monique. If you guys are new here, then what is up? My name is Erica. Hey, how you doing? If you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, maybe you're just into the mythology and maybe, maybe you're just here to hear me talk about Greek mythological retelling so that you know which one is worth buying. Well, then this is not only the video for you, this is also the channel for you. You guys are gonna wanna hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know every single time I post in the future. But on top of today's video, and as you can see from the title, we're going to be reviewing Madeline Miller's Galatea. Before I get into the whole video, I do wanna say, I don't know if it's Galatea or Galatea. So if there's a Greek person who's watching again I say this in every single video please leave a comment and write up phonetically how I'm supposed to say it but for the time being I'm gonna be picking my poison and I'm picking Galatea so I could just be going through this entire video mispronouncing this but like it's a risk I'm gonna have to take but now that I've gotten that out of the way let's just dive into the review so Galatea is like the cutest little thing that I have ever purchased in my entire life I want to start there because this book is just the tiniest like just all around this whole thing. It's like the size, it's smaller than my head. It is about the same size as my head. But like, oh my goodness, it is so cute. And it's so thin, which is really nice. It's a short story. So it's not actually a, a book. It's not even a novella. It is just a short story uh, about Galatea, who's a Greek mythological character, obviously, because I wouldn't be reviewing it if it wasn't. But you guys are probably like, what the hell is Galatea? So Galatea is a character that plays a role in the myth of Pygmalion. Now, the myth of Pygmalion, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with it, but it's very commonly played on in uh, modern movies, in modern cinema, in modern theater. Like a lot of these stories stem from Pygmalion as well as like literally the player called Pygmalion. Like obviously that stems from that and it has the same sort of sentiments as the myth. So the myth, why don't we briefly talk about that? That the myth is this guy called Pygmalion, he is a sculptor and he basically decides, this is gonna sound so bad. He basically decides that he just doesn't like any women, that he just doesn't see any of them as being like worth his time. I'm paraphrasing massively only because I'm gonna be getting into the myth literally in like a month or two. So I don't wanna to give too much detail. So I will be linking it up in, in the corners when that video comes out. But that's basically what he thinks. He's just like, nope, all these people are like gross. There are lots of courtesans where he's from. He decides he doesn't want any of it basically. And so he's going to carve out of marble his ideal woman. So he does this, he carves this beautiful woman, like she's literally perfect. And then he cries because obviously she's a statue and like he can't actually you know, love her and hook up with her and all of this stuff. It's very strange and very problematic. And then the gods, like Venus, basically, the Roman goddess Venus, because it's written about an Ovid, she feels so bad for him that she turns Galatea, which is the statue, into a real woman. And so they basically live a happily ever after. Now that myth, again, I've paraphrased it massively because I'm gonna go into it um, later on. However, that myth is really weird when you read it. It's not like romantic. You're not like, oh my goodness, this guy carved his ideal woman. It's very much that he decides all women who were created, and he doesn't say this, but all women who were created outside of men's ideals of women and what a woman should be are not worth his time. So he carves his own idea of a woman who exists because of him and he creates this, it's very strange. Like when you actually read the language that's used, like in the Latin, if you choose Ovid's version, um, it's, it's weird. Like nobody reads that myth and goes, oh, that's so cute. No, but I will be linking it in the description below if you guys wanna read that myth for yourselves. I will try and find it in the Latin as well as in the English so that you guys can find it. So check out the description um, if you do want to read it before my video detailing the entire myth comes out. So you're probably wondering if the book is specifically talking about that uh, myth. Now, the thing with the, the thing with Galatea is that it's not actually about the creation of Galatea herself. It's actually about more so the aftermath of of that myth. So in that myth, again, as I said, they they theoretically like fall in love. They even have a kid. Like all of this again after the statue has become a woman because obviously not in statue form. That would be really weird. But anyways, so they end up having this child. Whatever. Again, they live their theoretical happily ever after. And what Madeline Miller has done is she's taken that myth and written the ever after part and missed out the happily where she's just like, no, this is problematic. This is a really weird myth. And we're not gonna sit around and act like it's adorable and act like it's cute. And so she wrote how, how that myth would have ended um, based on the behavior of somebody like Pygmalion. So yeah, for Madeline Miller, it's not a happy ending. She wants to call out this double standard. She wants to call out this man. She wants to call out the treatment of this woman and how other women of that time were looked on as being only desirable if they were hitting like men's standards and male standards um, of that time. And Galatea is a perfect example of that. So she wrote the ending of the story. And I don't want to ruin it for you because it's not myth. It's actually something that you guys can go and read and see her version of the story. So I, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it's about, but it's not happy. And it's more so a realistic view of like what that relationship would have been like and how Galatea would have been suppressed and, and oppressed, I guess is a better word, um, by somebody like Pygmalion. So in saying that, I can't really critique it in regards to mythology because it's, it's Madeline Miller's own version of the aftermath of a myth that we don't 
have. Like we don't have that part of the story. We just have the, and they lived happily ever after. So I can't actually critique it and say, can you learn from it? Can you not? I would recommend if you want to buy Galatea to read the myth itself and then to read the short story because otherwise the short story really won't make any sense. If you don't know the myth of Pygmalion or you haven't listened to it, I don't know if there's a podcast on it or something, and then you won't, you won't really get what she's doing with it. But I actually really liked it. I have to say it's, again, it's not long. It took me like 30 minutes to read the whole thing. Like just so that you guys can see. Literally not a lot of text on each page. So it really won't take you that long to actually get through. And also at the end, what she does, which I really like for people who maybe don't know the mythology as well as I do, or as well as another classist or something, she does add in a little, a little like note about where the myth comes from and about what she was playing on and about why she um, portrayed it the way that it was, which I really appreciated. I would sort of summarize Madeline Miller's version of Galatea as a woman who is coming to understand what she needs and what she deserves after being in a very questionable uh, position, shall we say? That's literally putting it so lightly. But yeah, she figures it out through that whole scenario, what she needs, what she deserves. And at the end of the story, she ends up uh, doing that in order to, to free herself of the oppression and of the suppression. I'm not really sure which one I'm I'm supposed to use. Like I don't know that language very well, but it's one of those that that she feels in her relationship and in her new life after becoming human, once being carved by statue. Marble even, not statue, you can't say that. See, I would definitely recommend it. And as I just said, you should be reading the myth before you buy Galatea, but I absolutely loved it. Like I really did like what she did with the myth. And I really liked how she played on this myth that wasn't, like, like the myth itself isn't all that popular. And I really appreciate that when people do that. And I really love it when people do that because it's shedding light on people that, you know, the average person might not be super familiar with. Like even if you're familiar with Pygmalion, lots of people don't know that the statue is called Galatea um, and, and that sort of stuff. And they don't know the surrounding, the other parts of that myth aside from Pygmalion maybe carved a statue, if that. So I do really appreciate when people are doing that. And I do really like how she wrote an afterward of the myth rather than rewriting the myth. But yeah, positive vibes out here on Moaning today. So thank you guys so much for watching this and I will be linking Galatea in the description below because I do recommend that you guys buy it. It's not expensive again, it's not a long read and it's perfect now that we're coming up to summer and we're coming up to spring and you guys might wanna have a short book to bring to the coffee shop. Like this is the perfect thing to bring. It's not heavy, it's thin, it will only take about 30 minutes to read and it's a, it's a good time and it's a good one to read in order to learn about, um, about mythology in a different way than reading a typical mythological retelling because it's not a retelling. I just said it was a good time, but based on this review, you guys know what I mean by that, that like it's a good time to read it, but it's not a happy story. Anyways, with that being said, why don't we just close off this video? So thank you guys so much for tuning into this book review. I absolutely love Galatea and I hope you guys loved it too. If you guys have read it and maybe you have the same views or differing views, then leave them in the comments below because I'd love to chat to you guys about books. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll be seeing you next time with more book reviews here on Monink. I'll see you then.